Behemoth Brewing Company presents the Department of Conversation with Pat Brittenden. Behemoth, give me something hoppy. There she is. <laughs> Hello. Hey, man. How are you? Mm. Mm. Happy. I'm just eating Good. a homegrown tomato piece of toast on a homemade piece of bread at afternoon o'clock. Show you why I'm happy. This is why I'm happy. Are you ready? Can you what? see your screen? Oh, yeah. Sweet as a nut. Today's negative tests. Nice. Well done. That, that makes me very happy. Negative hey. tests. Now we'll just see if I'll be negative on Monday, and then yep. I can get back to life. Fingers crossed. Yay. How you doing? You can do it. I'm doing, I'm doing pretty good, actually. Yeah, it's busy, but excellently busy, I guess. You know, two teens in the house. One's gone to uni. Yep. A very naughty dog who tried to eat my tomato toast and actually got away with one quarter of it. No How? wonder he table. looked so sheepish when he had, when I walked into the room. Otto, leave off. Where's Otto? Show us Otto. Okay. He's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> like, Otto, Should... leave off. Come, come here, Otto. Awesome. Should we play puppy pictures? Yes, play puppy pictures. Oh, hello. Oh, oh, oh. Otto. How long have you had Otto? I've had He's two years old. Right. He's hard to see, eh? Dark dogs are no, hard no, to no, see. I'll oh, show you. It's funny. This is, I was looking at this. I put this on TikTok today. My dog has this real crazy thing when I get her up in the morning and she goes, oh, yeah, good morning. And then I go, there's a little dog in my house. And she goes, <laughs> mental. And I thought I, I thought I, I put it on TikTok, and I did one of those. Yeah. Stages, you know, anyone else wants to show me how they get their dogs up? Uh, this is how I get mine up. I'll play it for you, and then you'll, and then you'll see what she does. Yes, please. Okay. All righty then. Show me how your dog acts when you get them up in the morning. Here's mine. So she's happy and chill. There's a little dog in my house. Come on. There's a dog in my house. And then we end up going down to what we call the cuddle couch. No wonder they're happy. Yeah, she knows where she's going. She knows she's in for cuddles. <laughs> Go and tell her to wait for me. And she waits for me. And then, unfortunately, with the children, she jumps all over them. But for me, she waits. So that's sitting down beside the couch. Otto really likes the look of your dog. He's just waiting, waiting. Waiting. Okay, come on. <laughs> so that's how that's how we start most of our mornings. Uh, that is I... a nice morning routine. I like yeah. it. Yeah. And actually yeah. I realized I've realized that she actually does that anytime now. <laughs> <laughs> It's that squeaky voice, obviously. So I was telling I, a friend the other day, I was oh, not in my house because I'm in isolation, but I was talking about it. And I mean, it's so weird how we, I, when I go, there's a little, and she looks at me like this and starts running around in circles. So obviously yeah. that's gotten to the DNA of her for some reason. And that's the thing. It's you, nice know to see her. you know the exact reason it's gotten to her DNA. She's like, <laughs> good old time. <laughs> Yeah, we call it the cuddle couch. I'm not a I'm not a fan of dogs on beds and dogs on couches. I never have been. Of course, previous you dog we didn't do that kind of stuff. Um, but now that the kids go backwards and forwards between their mothers and mine, yeah, uh, in their mother's house, the dogs are all over the furniture. Um, yeah. so they're like, "Oh, Dad, can we have the dogs on the couch?" And so I made my compromise was the leather couches are okay. Okay. So le leather couches are okay, and that's the two seater leather couch, which I we call the cuddle couch. And she's up and down on that. When people sit there, be aware, basically, because she knows what that's all about. If you sit on the three seater, uh, the three seater, not so much. If you sit on the two seater, just look out. There's a ginger bitch coming towards you. <laughs> my um, husband, my husband, similar to you, he really doesn't want dogs on the couches or the beds unless they've asked. So our dog sleeps underneath our bed, and ah. then at about six thirty in the morning, sort of just goes like this, and I'm like, hup. And if Hamish goes away, somehow the dog knows. <laughs> they, no, they completely know. Like you saw that video I just showed you of, of me telling the dog she came up on the two-seater. She doesn't yeah. get up until I tell her. Anyone else on the two-seater? Straight up. And beside them, head on the lap. 
So she, they, they know. I mean, this is what I say to my kids: is they'll, the dog, dogs are like children. They'll push you as far as they are allowed, and then when they realize there's a barrier, they, they typically don't cross it. And so, I'm, but I'm the, I'm, are you, I let, when you say, I bet you are, like you're the guy who doesn't like them on on couches. That kind of comes across and goes, yeah, you're a, you're a grumpy shit bed. I get that, but. When we got her as a puppy, we got had her at seven and a half weeks. I thought it was a bit early, actually. Um, you know, I was the one sleeping out in the lounge with her, with her first nights away from her mum and that kind of stuff. So there's a there's a tiny bit of softness here as well, Pete. I like it. There's there wasn't meant to be judgment in that con- <laughs> comment, Pat. It's more that I would perceive you to have some quite strong boundaries and then some real loose ones. My opinion on dogs is they are the bottom of the food chain. Yep. They have to be the least important being in the house. And that little ginger thing we've got, Nala is her name, that little ginger thing that we've got is well-trained and is obedient and knows her place. And so, you know, when we go out and stuff, we, we lead her at the appropriate time. But when we go to public parks and stuff, even if it's not a dog park, we can have her off with us and she will stay with us. And if another dog approaches us, I make her lie down and she lie down and she stays. She won't move until I let the other ridiculous human being get control of their dog again. Um, so I, it's, it's that, it's that, you know, boundaries giving security. And I think that's very relevant in dogs. It, it's very relevant in dogs and in humans. I agree. It's so hard sometimes when you say, just you treat your kids like you treat your dog. It kind of works out quite well. Yeah. It doesn't, it doesn't quite feel right saying that. Quite feel right. Yeah. But there is a lot of love, I think. We we offer a lot of love for our dogs. There's like no questions about their commitment and loyalty to us. And yet sometimes we question whether our children love us or we allow that to be a question when really it's our love and commitment to them that is paramount. Like yeah. we've got it sorted. We love and are committed to them so don't worry about what they feel like i was thinking today about how long it's been since i've actually kind of seen you face to face we've had yeah. interactions over the last because i've been in dunedin since 2014 yeah so um didn't we run, we ran into each other in a cafe in dunedin did we yep we did and i think i was with amanda billing actress photographer um oh, artist yes, i remember that and she asked yes. me to come along to the show that they were doing down here that's right yeah so she was doing yeah. a show at a school or using a school auditorium yeah. or something like that. yeah something doing some sort of theater something at the local school and was promoting that and yeah obviously I thought that remember. was a more memorable day in your life than in mine no no i get it. i remember that now <laughs> i remember that now but no i was i was thinking about what we used you to had your girls house. with you and everything you were eating cake at some cafe that i can't remember the name of but I definitely, no, it was, I, it was more memorable for me because I'm away from home. I'm in Dunedin and yeah. I'm running into someone I know. So, yes, That's definitely. Amazing. It was cool. It's funny how that happens. I remember going to, in 1988, going to Expo in Brisbane. Yeah. Yeah. And I was a 13 year old or whatever I was, a 12 year old. Yeah. And uh, in the line in front of us in the queue were our yeah. neighbors from Hillsborough. No way. <laughs> yeah. Crazy, eh? It's like, oh, hi. And we don't really, <laughs> didn't really, I mean, we talked nicely, niceties across the fence at home back yeah. in Auckland, New Zealand, but yeah. they were the people in front of us at the queue at Expo. There so, you go. Funny how that does happen. It is actually quite a small world after all. A small world after all. I wanted to tell you something. Right. That and I you thought now if, would be the right time to do it. Well, and- I don't know if, I think you're aware of this, but there is something about acknowledging people publicly and stuff as well which i like to do okay you so be nervous been... or don't be nervous no don't be nervous okay, okay. You, you are such a kind and generous and giving and caring person mm. i want to tell people a story about what something you did for me not not for any other reason other than it's me also acknowledging how much i appreciate you and kind of even though we're not in each other's lives at, at the moment face to face still mm. always do my mum passed away in 2018. In the weeks leading up to her passing away, I think she passed away in, in October, uh, she celebrated a birthday in August. Uh, and I did a bit of emailing around, you know the story, so I'm telling other people, you know, is anyone going away for the school holidays? Anyone need a house? Da, 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 da. And you said, come stay at our place. We won't be here. We'll be off one of our other spots or having fun with people or doing something. Come and stay at our place. So I very much recognize what I'm seeing over your shoulder there. 
Okay. And we went and stayed at your place, uh, me and my three children. That was, yeah, I was just trying to think who was who was there. Yeah. And we got to spend a week with my mum, uh, including her birthday, which kind of, not in a depressing, sad way, turned into a bit of a wake because mm-hmm. everyone knew she had motor neuron disease that the time wasn't that long and would be that long. Whether it was a few months or a, a year, we didn't know exactly, but there was a good chance it was her last last birthday. And um, I've, I know I've thanked you for this, personally but I, I just wanted to say again what you may not know is when she died in October I was in the um, restaurant to their retirement complex eating doing something and you called me and obviously you called me because you knew someone whose mum passed away and you were, you know as you do and it was the only time in that week and it's not because I'm a hard bastard with no emotion I am actually a crier full stop but I I, I hadn't cried through that whole time with mum and I don't know why I think possibly it was because sometimes you get a job to do and you got to do it and that's the focus and when you phoned me during that period it was the only time I cried during that week because what I realized was what you guys had given me and my three kids was a week with mum right near the end and it was amazing And, and like I said it was obviously a point where everything got got to me and the emotion came out. Um, but I don't know. I just, I guess I wanted to say thank you and sort of acknowledge mm. you and say, you know, what you do with what you have as, as a model that even, uh, you know, for those of us who haven't done quite what you have done or gone quite what you've gone, try and model to our own instance. And it's mm. just amazing. And you're amazing. And that's mm. all I really want to say in this podcast. So we can probably wrap up. <laughs> <laughs> Are you trying to make me cry? No, no, no. But listen, I know you probably get this from lots of people all the time. And I I, I, I care about you and I value oh. the friendship we have and had and have, whichever the, we're on the, the linear we all are. And I just wanted you to know actually oh. properly that that was really important to me. And I don't know, you're a pretty special person. And I just wanted to say it here. Oh, thanks, Pat. I actually do feel a bit teary about that um, because life is fast paced and and it's easy to forget the moments. I really remember buying this house with my husband and um, I'm a person who talks to God. So I said, I promise I'll share it. It took us like three <laughs> years to buy it and many attempts <laughs> to buy it. And we, yeah, we we finally, finally um, were able to do that. And I, on the on the journey to signing on the dotted line, I said, I promise I'll share it. And it's always hmm. been a house of hospitality. And my heart is happy when it's full. And I guess also my heart is happy with um, humans around, whether I get to be here with them or not. So, yeah, yeah thanks for taking the call when I called. And mm. thank you for your, um, yeah, your words then. That's actually very lovely. And it doesn't happen all the time. I really appreciate it. I live with two teenagers who hardly talk at all. Oh and they've God. always got their headphones in. So, yeah. so the other night that both of them wanted to eat on their own and I'm like, what am I, chopped liver? <laughs> and one of the sons said to me, mum, you know, tell yourself the truth. Like, all I, I don't not like you. If I had to choose between computers and you, I'd choose you. But I just no. want to have dinner in my bed tonight. No. Like, Fair enough. Go for it, son. Yeah, I don't know. You're probably not. You're probably too mature for this. But the new series of South Park started up, and they just had an episode last week or the week before where they featured yeah. teenagers, oh. and the the young boys, the boys, the four main characters in South Park wanted to play um, paintball, or it's not paintball, it's called, called airsoft, but the same thing. Yeah. So it's paintball yeah. without paintball, but yeah. they weren't allowed to play unless they had teenage partners because they were too young. So they got themselves each a teenager. And then the whole storyline is about how these these little um, grade four, grade five boys were all of a sudden cleaning up after the teenagers, making the teenagers dinner. The teenagers were calling them at all hours, going, "How do I boil water?" <laughs> and uh, it was it was it's very. And I was just like to my fifteen year old, I didn't say fucking, but fucking watch that episode. <laughs> you need to watch that episode. And all the teenagers the whole time were just like, "Bruh, bruh, <laughs> just leave me alone." <laughs> it was so funny, and That's it's so sad. yeah, they're so on point. It sounds so good. Only I lost one of my teenagers now and I miss them terribly. Uh, but yeah, yeah, they were away for a year, for, for year 13, went to Wanaka for final year of school and came back oh, wow. and they were like, aren't I amazing now, mum? Don't I just do <laughs> stuff without being asked? Don't you like, don't, the boys don't realise yet, do they? And I'm like, nah, they don't. 
But somebody else said to me, you get them for eight, you've got them for 18 summers, 18 summers before they can do whatever the heck they want with their lives. And, you know, essentially they can arrange to go and have summer with some other family or, uh, and I was like, wow, that's kind of a window. I, I like the sound of that. I feel like I can contain it in my brain. Um, so I'm making the most of the last few summers, the handful where they belong to me and we get to hang out together. It makes me, it makes me kind of reflective as well on yep. family breakup being someone mm. who's gone through that because yeah. straight away your 18 summers become nine because you're going for half the time. Yeah. And then like my 15 year old pretty much lives with me most of yeah. the time. Yeah. And the nearly 18 year old who has actually moved out and gone flatting now spent the last 18 months, tw maybe even two years, but 18 months pretty much living just with um, the mother. Yeah. Um, and so it's even, it's, it, it brings up that it evokes an emotion to me to think, yeah. You've only got your kids for a short period of time. And if you need to figure out, as Ian Grant used to say, lumpy families, yeah. um, it's even less. Yeah. So true. It's so true. Yeah. And I think somehow that perspective changes the hard days. Was it somebody who said the days are long, but the years are short? And I thought, I oh, quite like that. It's this, when you're in the moment of a hard day or you're picking up after your teen yet again, or they, you know, you've asked them a thousand times, just put their lunchbox in the sink, just don't leave it in your bag, or just pick up the rub, just bring your plates out of your room, or just put your clothes in the laundry. It's like not, doesn't seem hard as an adult. Um, and then when those things are like that, I, I have to focus on what, what's awesome about them as humans and the fact that that this is, we're at the end, we're at the closing of the window rather than the opening of it, you know? Yeah. It's pretty terrifying as well on some levels to think about having a 15 year old second to last year of school mm -hmm. that in 20 months from now, mm -hmm. that's it. And I mean, my, my two elders like me finished their entire school career at 17, first year yeah. of university turned 18. My youngest will turn 18 in, in her last year of school. Um, but even though we talk about adults at 18 and all this kind of stuff, actually once you walk out that high school, that last, day really that that's kind of it on many levels because they yeah. can do what they want go where they want you know yeah. study what they want not study work and it's it's really the end of it go They're to not sleep when they parents. want watch what they want drink what yeah. they want see who they want it's yeah it's a whole bag of self-mastery and and yeah. i think as parents we're often asking ourselves have i done enough <laughs> my my whole orientation these days towards parenting is connection it's, it's does this conversation that I have with this child build connection or destroy it? And it's not that you can't have hard conversations and it's not that you s only say popular stuff, but I really do um, seek to keep the connection with them, whether or not I'm agreeing with everything they do. And I'm not going to agree with everything they do or say or watch or listen to or la, la, la. So the whole yeah. light changed. Did you see that? You can tell I'm a cameraman's wife, like the whole yeah. – <laughs> Lighting change. <laughs> yeah. How is it? Because now you're doing a bunch of new things, new new to yeah. new to when I knew you. Um, yep. Are you working with the parenting places? Oh, I see that you're doing some stuff there. Or did you? Or yep. what's going on in your world at the moment? Oh, yeah. I did work with Parenting Place as an ambassador for them for a couple of years, having had a loose association for ages. Yeah. Uh, and now I've moved into media chaplaincy. I'm actually a student in Dunedin albeit a distance student through Otago Uni, um, studying chaplaincy, basically for people who work in media, which I think um, you might mm -hmm. understand if that might make sense. Yeah, I've got a website. Woohoo! And I have dunk, 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 made a podcast. And I know lots of people make podcasts. <laughs> but this well, one's sorry. Just... Can you, can you, what's this podcast thing you speak of? Can you explain it to me? <laughs> or is it a new <laughs> thing? I feel like I'm making such a song and dance about it, but honestly, it took as long as making a human being does. And I did that three times. We started sort of recording 10 months ago. And so because of the process that we've been through, we had to keep holding. I think COVID also helped um, with the holding process. But yeah, yeah, it, it, it's great to have a creative project up and running, albeit it's, um, it, it's a smaller scale than what you do, Pat. Oh, there's nothing big scale about what I do. 
I mean, you're, you know, you've got longevity and you've got all the whiz, and you know, I know that you is, used to panel for us when we were on the radio. You're the no. techno whiz here. Um, oh, I'm actually, I'm actually kind of, and in in lots of this word, I'm sort of not. I'm just having okay. a look. I don't know. I don't know what episode we're up to, actually. To be honest with you, let's have a look. What episode are you up to? Uh, your two, this two twenty was last week. Bruce was last week. Uh, so you're two twenty one. So there you go. Two twenty one yeah. is actually a huge achievement. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah it's I'm busy. up to episode two. <laughs> well, we both got twos in this episode. You yeah, exactly. you've got a two. I've got two twos. Yeah, it's, it's you've fine. got a couple of twos. If you come on next week, I would have three twos, but yeah, it's not. But who's counting? We're not counting. <laughs> um, but it, so, what are you? The, the podcasting world is interesting, interesting, and you're obviously someone of profile. You know, there's way back to Ice TV days. Yeah. There's also, you know, the, the heights of your broadcasting career on Sunday, Sunday, Sunday on uh, New South Wales back Sources. in the day. Yeah. Um, but but TVNZ, TVNZ Brick was probably the highest profile role you had, do you think? Or was like uh, Ansi kind of your life technically would that have had more cut through? I don't know. Um, what's really in our food was super popular. Right. In its day, and set New Zealand Time of Your Life, tra- um, the international travel show we did, um, I, uh, travel.co.nz, that was also quite popular. I guess the thing about breakfast is it's daily. So being yeah. on air for three hours a day is different to a half-hour show once a week. It literally is. So in terms of that um, ability for the audience to to build rapport with you or to be exposed to you. It's just greater. Mm. Yeah. And it was supposed to be a peak. It just turns out newsrooms are not my comfort zone and breakfast is not my time zone either, really. (laughs) Yeah, I I was saying to someone, I've started a new daily, a daily live stream news show called Big Hairy News. Um, (laughs) I wonder why. (laughs) How would you well, call it that? I, I, I want to try and say it's because of the big hoary, uh, big hairy, audacious news stories we chase. We chase, but um, but I think people mostly just see the beard. I think that's probably about it. Probably. And then, unfortunately, someone like Penny Ashton comes on and starts talking about her, uh, her her menopausal little bit of hair on her chin as well. I don't want to go there. I'm just like, no, it's not what it's about. No, go there, go there, go there, go there. We're going to talk about. I honestly, literally, have one of these dark strong ones and could I find the tweezers but I know you can't see it right no. and I know I'm no less of a woman for having one course here here but actually there's something in me all of me wants it gone because what if somebody sees it and so you know meh. let's talk about uh, it yeah I'm I'm, I'm not uh, the, I'm the last person in the world to talk about appearance I mean look at me I remember I remember reading an article once that said you know what men over 40 should never have and one of them was hoodies and I went you obviously don't fucking live in Dunedin or a cold, or cold climate at all hoodies yeah. are a godsend and I'm gonna uh, push back against you and not caring about appearance because self-consciously casual is a thing um, Marcus Lush showed up at the TV Awards one year wearing a T-shirt and jeans. He didn't accidentally wear a T-shirt and jeans. That's what he wore. So if you choose to curate and spend and fuss in anything, in any direction, or to wear hoodies and to be bearded and to wear a cap and those are your glasses, that's a choice. You're, you're still communicating with how you look. I think it's great. I Absolutely. The hat thing I've, I've, I've come back with, I was hats all my younger yep. life. Yeah, and I had when I was married, I had a hat, and actually, when we moved to Dunedin, we went to uh, Milford Sound, went on the boat, and the hat blew off my head, and went into the the probably been eaten. I probably killed seven seals that ate my hat, probably. Um, but you know, three or four years later, I was like, I like hats, and now I've got about fifteen of them. Someone said to me the day in one of our live streams, "Out of interest, what team do you follow? You wear lots of hats." And I went, "Oh, no, I'm just a poser." I just like hats. <laughs> I, mean, it's, it's, I just like hats. So I wear hats. And it's not because I'm like, people always think about you here. I'm a, I've got a lot of that, you know, thick and it's all that kind of stuff. I'm not going bald or anything. It's just, Glorious. I like, Glorious I like hats. Yeah. Yeah. I like hats. Yes, you do. There you go. Um, that's an appearance. That's an appearance. That's a style thing. You, you're, I reckon you've got quite a strong style, but that's me. I, I like, if, if, if I talk about my style, if I also talk about having like, a, a, you know, a, a budget for wardrobe, um, there is an episode, there is a show where a whole bunch of high profile people often in the hip hop world go to a shoe store yep. and spend $20,000 buying shoes. And it's a podcast. It's a, it's on YouTube. And basically they interview them while they're getting their shoes. Uh, there's an episode with Eminem. I like how Eminem looks. He's got kind of, he's kind of, um, a black, um, 
denim and a jacket and a t-shirt and he looks smart but it's like it's like denim smart you know it's not like suit pants or anything smart and i'm like that that's me when i lose another 20 kilos that's me i'm gonna that's that's my path i'll be black denim and black denim i think because that's i like that look i like the sound of that black denim and black denim yeah i'm i'm going i'm 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 putting the kilos on so i'm going for unwasted more flowy things flowy flowy it's good whatever your season I'm just putting m M&M by shoes. Oh, there it is. Look, there's the episode. Have you found it? I'll, I'll, I'll bring it up. I won't play it because it's probably little... copyright. That's the, there's the imagery right there. Oh, mm, nice. So, got a hoodie. Back. And then I'll hood. Uh, yeah, he's got a black hoodie on. Man, uh, so there hoodie. you go. So there, there, there's the episode right there. <laughs> he's not saying um, anything in his style, is he? He's not communicating at all with his clothing. He's from Detroit. It rains in Detroit. You know, I mean, it snows and stuff. you got to have – that's the thing about a hoodie that I find is that, like, actually sometimes – being in Auckland for 40 years of my life, coming down here, you put the hood up and your ears are warmer and you yep. yeah. So so I know people when I when I put my hood up, they think I'm trying to look um intimidating. And I and I have done that. The neighbors up the back once were rented out by students and it was two in the morning and they were still going. And I put the hood up and went in on their door and yep. just said, it's just said it's time to settle down. You're keeping my kids awake. And they did. And maybe that's because of the hood. <laughs> Maybe, maybe, I don't know. Maybe it's because I'm six foot four as well and, and look quite scary at the time. Maybe, I don't know. Awesome. Car pie. Um, well, I was going to ask you, talking about what you've done in the media, are you someone who uh, has an opinion? Like, I'm not saying commentates publicly necessarily, but I watch what's going on in the media now. I mean, my background is radio. You, you've done radio, TV, everything else, hosting, all that kind of stuff. Um, do you look at what's going on now? And I mean, like, do you think that the media – however you would describe that, television, radio, uh, digital, print, in 2022 is vastly different from, say, uh, 2000, you know, the year 2000. What have you seen that uh, – because I'm assuming that it's something that you notice, that you keep an eye – even if you're not keeping an eye on it, it's something that's because you still know people and you know what's going on and you see what's going on. What what do you think of media today? Is there anything that you've thought about that's, you know, amazingly better, worse, different? I'm not going to say good question because that's just a stalling tactic for while you're thinking up an answer. (laughs) I'm going to say um, having launched my own career, what turned out to be a career in media in 1995 and on an episode of Ice TV where John Bridges and myself explained what the internet was using pieces of string and matchboxes. I literally said, these are servers, this is your computer and they connect up. That the... Uh, ability to have access to your audience now and for your audience to have access to you obviously is profoundly changed. And I see that people who who deserve a voice have it. There's probably people who who maybe use their voice not for the benefit of humanity. Well, probably. There are people who use their voice for the benefit of their own back pocket solely or their own um, gain. And there are is so much there's so much less boundary between you mm. and the good and the good and the ugly. Uh, I so I feel for people coming in through social media and and having a computer basically in their hands. And I feel for them in so much as it feels to me when I look through young people's Instagram accounts, like so many of them are a brand. It's a representation. And you can see that um there's a trap of being this is how I look and what I'm doing but you're not connected to anybody but your peers so there's it feels visually even like there's a generation of people who are branding as on their own and I think it's it's an expired ideology I think the idea that we get anywhere on our own or we do life on our own is it's kaput it's it's like the American dream like exposed nobody wins an Oscar on their own nobody yeah, yeah, yeah. on their own we're all part of communities and the more community minded we can be and the more embedded in our whenua and fano and whakapapa actually the more secure we are because then if if somebody falls over you know mm. they're they're in they're in a community and we've got so many issues with mental health even who was it who was saying that this um young person was mowing lawns for an elderly gentleman in the neighbourhood. And when the young man's life started to unravel, um, it, the the actual fact that he was doing something in his community for somebody in his community, like volunteering and helping, meant that he 
there, he was he knew he was making a difference. He knew his life impacted positively, made a material difference in someone else's life. So he knew he was useful, like a basic thing like that. And I think often we can get stuck in our heads and ask all those existential questions of what my what's my life about or what's my purpose or what am I doing? So I've I've gone probably bigger than media. Um, media now is more layered, more complex, and the clickbait thing I think is really tricky. That you you could spend all day just you know fossicking. The feedback loop is a danger. So it's how. So it's how as a person do I expose myself to views that I don't necessarily agree with? How do I as a human being hold my um, my safety boundaries but remain curious, open-minded and have a, or curious in my mind and open-hearted? Probably that's the way I'd put it. I don't ever want to have to stop being curious because I think that I'm going to hit something that really rocks my whole world or mm. I don't want to not love people or see potential in people so I'm still hopeful for the media even though I know it's a bit of a rocky transition I just think this whole generation is actually in a rocky transition we haven't figured out the impact of social media and and online learning and living and being and all of that online we haven't figured out where healthy boundaries are so yeah it, it, as you're talking and I'm listening the idea of community and then a like talking again about social media, I, I often wonder as well, we're in this transitional stage with those sorts of ideas because you could think about getting massive community with this. You know, I've got yep. a million TikTok followers, I've got yep. whatever, yep. but you could literally not know a single person. Yeah. So it's also the idea of being individual, being by yourself, being alone, being not in relationship with people in, re in the real world and having like a faux front of having a yeah. massive community around you as well. Yeah. Um, and I was thinking as you were talking about how the media is adjusting, like we've got this, we've got this tried and true form of media, traditional media, media like radio and television and print. Um, mm -hmm. And then yeah. that even that traditional media has now moved into digital as well with, with, you know, these, these podcasts that are produced by these things like RNZ produces podcasts, media work yeah. produces podcasts, but they still kind of come under the traditional because they follow the traditional format. So like the media works podcasts have um, adverts that cut in and cut out and there'll be different adverts each week, like a radio station, whereas an independent podcast, if they're yep. sponsored, the advert will be there for the next five years. Yep. So it's a slightly different model. And both have pros and both have cons. Mm -hmm. This world of information as well, the, the, the pro that the, the traditional media has is it goes from the source to the journalist, to their manager, to the editor, to the paper. Mm -hmm. In the digital world that's independent, it goes from the source to the blogger, to the person. Mm -hmm. And while some will say, that's amazing, I go straight from the source to me. It's like, if it's horse shit though, and it needs to be fact-checked and looked at, mm. traditional media is the much better path of how to get true and accurate information. And I don't think, for example, independent pirate-type media at the moment has worked out how important the steps in traditional media mm. are mm. whilst not having to adhere to them or find their own way to do those checkings, those checking levels, quality control, if you will. And the enemy of good quality journalism research parenting is time, is if you have to quickly get it up because relevancy is the key marker, whereas relevancy is sort of neither here nor there because something that was relevant today isn't relevant tomorrow. Yeah. It's really hard to slow down. I fight urgent, important all the time. This is a notification, a thing, I need to get back to it. All of this is urgent. And for me to unpack that, to sit back for a second and go, what's important? What is it that I must do today so that I haven't so that I've met my responsibilities or haven't let somebody down or I've met my deadline rather than the ping, ping, ping. And even traditional newsrooms now are under pressure to get it up first. So fact checking and quality journalism takes time. You have to be committed and, and it takes cooperation. So I know that there are people who are struggling with the amount of time IOAs take. Um, if you get into combative and divisive and untrusting, everything slows down because everybody's trying to control it. 
Yeah. So, and that's where you know what what what's the kingpin? Is it money? Is it who gets the click? Therefore, gets the ad. Therefore, gets the. So good quality independent journalism will always be required by democracies. I think. And, well, look, and I hope that's why the merger between TV and Z and RNZ is so important because it shouldn't be. It shouldn't mm. be based on the the dollar. Shouldn't be the bottom line. Mm. Journalistic quality should be the bottom line, whether it is or not. I don't know. Um, yeah. But I was going to say, um, you seem to have been someone who's also, uh, bec- I think because you are innately generous with your time and want to help and want to help people, sure. you seem to also be someone who is on being on that path of learning to say no. And I know this from personal experience because prior to Christmas, we were talking about doing this and you explained how busy you were. And I said to you, if you're too busy, just say no. It's okay. You can just say no. And in fact, you, if you're too busy, you should just say no. And I remember we had a little toing from, and you said no, and you're too busy, and that's fine. Look at us. You know, four years later, we finally get up, catch up with it. Yeah. <laughs> can I can I say because you did you did a shout out to me as a female of a certain persuasion. I'm the firstborn child, so it's like the eldest daughter syndrome where you're. Um, I don't know what you want to call it, but you're an over, overachiever. So I thought right. you went to school to, I thought you always aimed for A's. That that was my idea of school. And, Not my idea. And, <laughs> and yeah, it turned, I met somebody at uni who was aiming for a C and I was like, what? That, you can do that? Like I just had no idea. Uh, so there was this sort of level of expectation of myself and and I think also as a woman, you are supposed to be kind in our society and you are supposed to be agreeable. Um, those are part of the gender stereotypes that have existed. And so for me, saying no wasn't really a thing. And even just that email to and fro, because I remember it, I, <laughs> I, made, I made some sort of loose thing like, well, you know, I'm busy in this and this and this. So, you know, I kind of tried, I handed you the option to, Pat, do you want to say, oh, Petra, you're too busy, don't worry. And I really tried to give it back to you. And you were like this, you were like, if you need to say no, you say it. And I was like, go. Yeah. Oh, hang on, hang on. That sounds, that sounds really aggressive. It wasn't quite no, said no. you just say it. It was like, it was like, it's okay for you to say no. It's, it's, no, it's it was, completely appropriate. No, Pat, don't, do not, <laughs> don't, do not mishear me here. It was literally boundaries. So that's the whole point. Saying no isn't aggressive and asking somebody to p- pull up their big girl pants and say no isn't aggressive either. And I actually was like grinning as I received that email because I'm like, <laughs> Pat is asking me to be a grown up and he's saying, if I can't do it, I need to say no. And to tell you the truth, I didn't know if I ever did say no or if I just never replied because I, can't I am useless at saying no. But I felt like you were giving me an opportunity to practice healthy boundaries. So, yeah, thank you. Well, well that sounds a little bit patronizing. Like I was, if I was doing that, I wasn't intending on doing that. I was just saying. Oh, no, it's how I, I took it. It's how I took my- it. Most of my emails that I send out to guests, especially people I know, because yeah. when you know people, it's like, yeah. well, of course I'm going to go on with Pat. I mean, oh, fuck, it's Pat. Yeah, I, yeah, I can't say no to Pat. I, I typically literally put in them, refusal won't offend. I actually write that into some of my emails, That's cool. especially to people I know. And I'm like, totally, if, you, if you're up for it, but this is the wrong time, refusal won't offend, you know, give me a time frame, I'll hit you up in three months. I've been chasing some people for... Four years. Two years. Two years. Yeah, four years. Two years. You know, yeah. and, and and the thing that I realize is someone who is trying to get someone to come on my content, who doesn't yeah. pay people to come on my content. Oh, you wear? Sorry. Ha, what? You're not <laughs> paying me money. And I've had some, you know, some pretty high profile big names give me yeah. an hour of their time. I'm like, yeah. I don't deserve I made a joke yesterday during the BHN uh news show that I approached Jacinda's office right before the election, all knows all the way through understandable started last year thought right i'll get into it in january and maybe by june or i'd be able to get her got told in january she's not available for you for the rest of the year <laughs> and whilst i thought oh, it's a little bit rude but i i completely understand it because i'm not entitled to anyone's time mm-hmm. i mean i'm not entitled i'm not entitled to your time right now i'm mm-hmm. certainly not bloody entitled to the prime minister's time who's going through covid and terrorist yeah. attacks and having a baby and white mm-hmm. island and, you know, 700 different leaders of the National Party, certainly not entitled to that. Um, so I, I never, I don't think I've ever once got angry with people not coming on or annoyed or disappointed because I don't, I don't deserve anyone's time. 
Well, I like your use of the word entitled rather than you don't deserve anyone's time because it's an invitation for them to spend time with you. And so you deserve it if they say yes. Sure, you you yeah, open. Sure, all right. Open I mean, it's it's, but, but yeah. entitled entitled is quite a good word. Like I think you're right. I don't think we are entitled to people's yeses and time. I've progressed from because um, I'm now asking people to come on my podcast, and some people replied with yes, and some people didn't reply, and some people said, "I'm so sorry, I don't have time right now." And and I've just transitioned. It's like a click in my head that went. It's data. If somebody can come on, that's a yes piece of data. If somebody can't mm. come on, it's a no piece of data. Whether they do or don't like me, whether they do or don't have time, whether it's right for them or not, it's it's all useful information. If I'm okay enough to to just receive it like that, I just am not, and I'm like you now, I just am not offended by somebody saying no thanks because I I, I respect that like fully. I, I equally think it plays out both ways. Like um, I've always been the kind of person that um, I think about if I'm going to ask someone for help, yep. I kind of go, if that person wants to ask me the same thing, would I be open to it? And if the answer is, of course, then I have no problems asking that person for help. Yeah. If I think about that and I go, yeah, I probably wouldn't help that person, you know, at least causes me to pause and go, well, or, or for that thing or whatever it is, it does cause me to pause and go, you know, what, what I'm not, quite sure about this but it's the same with the podcast you know i'm very comfortable in saying no you know and i'm very comfortable with people saying no so yeah. it's like if, if i don't want to do something i won't do it I won't, i'm not a dick about it but i i say no a lot to people uh, and but i'll tell them why oh yeah it's like someone asked me to do something on a on a radio station i used to work for and they wanted me to come on and talk about like you know, the big issues of the election and we're going to do it in four minutes and da, 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 da. And I just said, you know, I'm actually setting up a whole um, career at the moment about having long form conversations and not trying to go bang, 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 let's get out there in four minutes. And so now I'm, I, I appreciate the opportunity, but I'm just, it's not, it's not my thing at the moment. Mm. Whereas I know tons of other people would have absolutely jumped at it because it was an opportunity, but it's like, I'm, that's not the bag I'm trying to, mm. trying to push at the moment. I'm trying to talk to people li like, like, I, I mean, where that, we haven't really started this podcast properly, Petra, but just so you're aware, we're, we're actually going. This is this is the podcast. Oh, oh this but, is but it. We, yeah, but we didn't go, right, uh, <clears throat> so here's the bio yeah. of Petra Magist, and we're just talking, and that's yeah. that's what I want to do when we're talking. I just didn't, I mean, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it. It's just for what I was doing right there. I didn't want anyone to have to do the research to nut out a massive issue in a mm. three-minute segment because it had to fit between mm. two fucking ad breaks. It's not what I'm about at the moment. Yeah, and, and I think for visual media especially, form versus content is always a massive tension. And so podcasts are a little bit of joy in that scenario mm. where somebody could walk or cook or garden or do or drive and listen, or they can sit and watch. You know, and these days we're double screening. Well, not much of me, <laughs> but my kids are all double screening. And I think you're right, we need options. Like I remember being on breakfast and – and our job was to move a news story on in three and three and a half minutes to get some new piece of information to facilitate the newsroom having more to talk about. And it's so hard because there's no time for a relationship. There's no time to get in and under. And and I love long format. And so for me, even with my podcast, great areas, um, having 40 minutes to 60 minutes still feels like a squish. I just want to go into it deeper but yeah meeting people where they're at oh speaking of which there's a couple ah, of <laughs> that's so cool hi kids nice to hi see kids. you uncle pat speaking um <laughs> one yeah, of them is six foot four one of them is six foot four pat. No, that's my height uh, but i, I know probably, you I said could, it I could, I could probably still nail him with a bit of weight behind me though i'm thinking mm. Might be able to push him into the okay. All right. pushes or pull or next time down the hill. Um, <laughs> and look, the other thing is the thing I love about doing this. The thing yeah. I hate about doing this. Okay, tell it me. Was really, it was really nice at the end of a week at Newstalk ZB to get a fucking paycheck that could pay bills and pay a mortgage and that kind of thing. So that's yes. really difficult with this. But that's because I'm building a business and I'm building a digital empire. It's going to yes. be this, and it's going to be some other products as well, which yes. we're working on at the moment. And then all the media are going to run to me and ask my, I don't know. <laughs> um, so that was great about working with mainstream media. But the, the thing I love about this is when I worked at ZB, uh, basically my job was to keep people listening until the next ad break and get them to yeah. come back after it. Yeah. That was it. 
because that's how yeah. they paid their bills. Yeah. My job now doing this yeah. is to go, man, what's Petra up to? What's going on? Yeah. How are you? This is cool. Awesome. Can we talk yeah. another five minutes or another, you know, 40 minutes? It's just yeah. what's happening? You yeah. know, and that that's it. It's 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 nothing more than having cool chats with cool people and find and, and learning. And the other thing about this is learning. I always say I love being the dumbest person in the room. You know, I love it. In the in the news show we're currently doing, the daily news show, we've got academics on up the wazoo every day, one or two of them. And I just like to sit there and go, oh, oh, oh I'm learning. <laughs> Because it's fair and, and like during Omicron and during this yeah. kind of stuff, like like I'm isolated at the moment uh, because mm -hmm. of a, a completely ridiculous situation in my life. Um, but I am, I followed the science and I've taken care. Mm -hmm. And even though I've had COVID in my house, I just tested mm -hmm. negative. I actually expect to test negative on Monday. Mm -hmm. And part of that is because I'm learning from these people who come on things like this and teach me. And also from the research I'm doing to have those people on my show. I love it. I love it. It's my thing. I love being the dumbest person in the room. It's And it's common. And I love it. It's great fun. <laughs> well, I think, I, I, I don't know if I'd ever call you the dumbest person in the room, but I'd say you're eternally curious and, and, a, and a lifelong learner. You've always been somebody who's willing to engage in stuff they don't know. And so that um, creates life. And actually, I, I feel like if I ever got to a point where I thought I knew everything, I would be dead. So I yeah. expect to like you, I guess, keep learning. It's one of the cool things about going back to uni. The not cool thing is assignments, but the really cool thing is readings <laughs> and lectures and 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 new thought, like reading other people's thoughts from, you know, different times and different countries and different faiths and different, you know, regions all around the world. Um, yeah, so I think that, that, that that's cool to keep, to keep learning and to keep... Um, open to that stuff and we, I'm in isolation too we've got um, through really no stupidity just humanity um, my children go to a school with nearly 3,000 kids in it so um, oh, one of them one of them caught, caught COVID and so okay. far nobody else has um, and mainly I have to be careful for my parents who live on our property but in a separate um, dwelling so it's important they're immune compromised that they don't catch it but I mean I'm triple vaxxed so I'm unlikely to catch it in so many ways from a vaccinated person. Um, but yeah, we'll see and we'll just follow the protocol and see how we go. And let me just say for people who don't know my story, which will be most people listening to this, I, I don't have any problems with people catching COVID. Obviously it's a horrible and, you know, virus that floats around in tiny particles that no one can avoid. I have a, I have an issue in my life where a person made some, took, took some terrible risks and then um, was in a situation in a house with a bunch of people with sore throats and then decided that they would come back to my house after being in a house with a whole bunch of people with sore throats. So I'm frustrated with the need for me, the securities that I've put in place being smashed by someone's what feels like selfish uh, choices. But all in all, it's still, but the good thing about it boundaries is, issue? Maybe not the boundaries well, issue. I mean, it won't be a boundary issue for long. Um, but the good thing about it is we've continued to follow the science after mm -hmm. hearing the story. Mm -hmm. And because we continue to follow the science, including, you know, for a couple of days, masks in our own houses when we're around other people mm. um that's why i feel quite confident without mm. any guarantees I'll, I'll look like a fool if i do because i've said this three or four times i feel quite confident that we're we're a good chance at least of not getting it um, you are you are a good so. chance because this is yeah this is less contagious i've uh, i mean i don't actually know much but i've heard the researchers 15 minutes minimum to two hours within one meter in a confined space with the windows all closed. My house yep. is like a concrete tent. So where right now I would have uh, one, two, about seven or eight doors open. Yep. So there's just like air yep. everywhere. So, yep. yeah. And that's what we did when we found out that, that there was COVID in the house. The first thing, we had two days of fine weather down here, luckily in Dunedin. And yes, today it's kind of rainy and about 11 degrees. St. <gasps> Patrick's but... Day is rainy. And Patrick's day. Um, and and we did all those things. And we left the space for half an hour to clear out anything with people through there. And then we did the kitchen. And so we we did we put lots of things in place. So that's why uh, without any guarantees, I'm I'm at least confident that we're giving it a good crack to miss. And I'm and, confident for you as well, Pat. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I was gonna ask you as well, as you were talking before, you were talking about um clickbait and that kind of oh. stuff. Yeah. I'm interested in your take from being a person who's probably had a fair bit of clickbait about them. And I'm I'm thinking about a specific, specific uh, incident 
that I remember reading about you a long time ago. Because the point was, yeah, I will. Mm -hmm. The point that I was going to say is it's always been around. Yeah. It's just yep. now, I, it's now if I pull this up and at the moment on my phone, I've got uh, about seven articles to read from the last hour, you know, of news articles, probably yep. three of those are clickbait. But before, when Women's Day would do an advert, yep. it would say John Hawksby's and Petra Bagus dirty little secret. Yeah. Um, it's actually the same thing, but on a, not on a mass scale. And it was you guys revealing to the world i don't know how they didn't know that you had some kind of faith and that was the secret do you remember that article was that something you guys oh, did yes. or wrote about you oh yeah no i remember that article because i was invited to present christmas in the park as a really new presenter to tv3 um right. now three and um so we got dressed up and did a woman's day it was sort of like last minute and will you co-host with john hawksby which meant sort of just follow him around and you know like, <laughs> so like and, and, and it's funny <laughs> yeah yeah and, and i mean he was such a consummate professional and he knew the drill and so he was a great person to learn beside for that role but but woman's whatever did this shot of us sort of close together and me in a in a fancy frock and him in a suit and it was our something secret our yeah. love secret or something secret i thought it was dirty I, little secret what is it maybe it, it was but it, i don't th i don't think it was but it but was the word something about was in the word it, was, secret the, was definitely, yeah. it was definitely secret and maybe yeah. there was the implication that it was romance and it was him talking yeah. about his wife and me talking about my parents because I wasn't even engaged or married then. I was talking about how my parents got together and he was talking about how he got with his got you know some romantic connection with his wife. And I remember his wife being so upset by the inference. Yeah. I think she might have. I felt like she was upset with me. Of course, I had absolutely no control over what they did. But it was a it was a bit of an example. And another time, I did an article with my husband, and we talked about having premarital counselling as this idea of let's put some tools into play or into a kite, if you want, um, so that if we and when we intersect and it's tricky and there is conflict, we'll have some things to work with. And they just implied that our marriage was maybe perhaps a little bit on the rocks because right. we've done premarital counseling. And I'm like, yeah, right. this is a bunch of ass. Like this is just, <laughs> you're actually maligning. It's like you're defaming my relationship. I was, yeah. And maybe there's less of that now because it, it, it can't be, you, you know, like I could immediately say on my Instagram account, bunch of ass, um, yeah. hate the X, Y, Z for doing this or. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the last title think? was. 50 and fabulous. So I was like, okay, well, I'm almost 50 and I'll take it. Um, do you, so what I guess I was getting at, it's a bit yeah. like when we have conversations around bullying. And yeah. I remember, I'm tw I've never mentioned Ian Grant's name twice in a, in a show before, but he used to talk about bullying when he was doing his parenting stuff, especially on ZB. And yeah. it would be like, it was, in a, it was in a transitional stage where you're supposed to have your computer in the a common space yeah. so the parents could see what the kids were doing. And now yeah. that we've all got computers good enough to launch satellites in our pockets, it doesn't really work. But it went from being bullying on the playground mm -hmm. to the next iteration was bullying across the phone to your mm -hmm. home. The next iteration was bullying online, but it was in a common space. The, com the current iteration is bullying mm -hmm. across social media in the kid's pocket. Mm -hmm. And I guess what I'm wondering is, aren't these all just the same things, different iterations? Wasn't that headline with, with um, Hawksby yeah. really – Clickbait, clickbait it's a different iteration yep. but is the because there's so much of it now are we more wise to it so it's less less impacting in other words people look at a headline and go nah, clickbait or is because there's so much of it it's actually more like it's, it's worse for society than it was uh is there a single answer to that question oh, it's going to be worse for some people and other people are going to be more in tune i mean i read an article, and I understand an online newspaper needs to pay their journalists. We both said it's nice to be paid for the job you do. So yeah. those articles at the bottom, these celebrities now, or you won't believe it when you see, or this person's marriage, or that person's weight, or this person's salary, it is an active choice to resist the ping that happens in your brain where you go, oh, I wonder what does that person look like now? You know, like you have to be like, 
and and <laughs> pull away from uh, the poison bait. I'm just like, no, because I know the vortex and it doesn't. I watched some, honestly, I found myself on Facebook hardly, hardly ever there. And I think my kids were telling me what Twitch was and we were talking about um whatever their um, Discord there. So I get them to tell me about their platforms and I'll watch their video again. So I, and they, they were teaching me memes the other day, which I now bungle all the time. But I ended up on Facebook with these, you won't believe, 15 minute videos where this person pulls off a mask and you mean I've been dating you for 10 years and that's what you look like? The whole thing is, has to be trash. Like it's absolutely trash. Yep. But they're obviously holding people for 15 minutes. And I am blown away by a my own ability to watch one of them and go no no the whole way through and then start another one and go this is a thing and then I'll never go back like I'm done now but how we need to pay attention to what we're paying attention to like what are we paying attention to mm. is it the clickbait is it our, our mates is it the person who you know our neighbor is it is it our children or is it our notifications on our phone it's a really good challenge, a chewy one, I, I'd say. I um I was going to say I'm just going to bring up uh, Facebook now. I'm going to yeah. put it on the screen just to see what happens. But that is a very common situation. There are like uh, people who call themselves. Uh, what I'm suspicious of is that it'll come up in the first ten videos. So I'm just going to scroll through. They do that with this group. Um, oh, that's Jimmy Jackson comes up in mind. He's he's someone. Uh, they do it, and all of the videos are fake as. Yep. Um, and they take forever to do something. Yeah, forever. I've never and come that, across it till like now. There was, this, there was this one the other day that I saw, and I knew what was happening, so I skipped through it. Yeah. And they were take they were they were putting uh, color into a dress, and I went, I know what this is. How long is it going to be till they actually do the thing? Look at that. And the one the one instance where I said this will be all through my the feed. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you my one. I've remembered yeah. it. It was a woman who had a box over her belly and her soldier husband came home and hadn't seen her for nine months and didn't know she was pregnant. And so At it took him 15 or 17 minutes to take the box off her belly. Yeah. And, yeah. and I was actually sort of shouting at the video going, because the guy who was filming was just a nightmare and and so interrupty. And, so, and I was like, I can't believe it. They took, and the very last shot at minute 17. And so I was like, oh, wow, this is actually a thing. Yeah. People are... Are losing their lives. Yep. And so this was a this was this was a cake, and it had a, a, okay. a funnel on it, and they tipped different color, um, yep. you know, uh, icing in it, and they were going to pull it off, and the thing was going to throw down. And probably forty times in the twelve minute video, they were like, "We're going to pull it off, and it's going to go down." Oh no, we're going to we're going to wait. What's going to, we're going to pull it off, and it's going to go down. And just again and again and again and again and again and again and yep. again. And then eventually yep. they pull it off, they're like, "Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought." Yep. <laughs> no, yep. Nothing special. So there must be something, though, in the human psyche that is will hold. Then there must be science behind it, like a like a loose 15 to 17 minutes of what will the reaction be, like reaction yeah. videos and even videos, reaction videos of reaction videos. So I know there's – I've got a friend who works in providing resource to parents, teens, young people, and um, sexual health workers about – pornography use in New Zealand like what do people do when they don't want to watch pornography anymore or what how will it impact their relationship or uh, what what can they find out about it what is what's the messaging that they're getting and and there's all these videos now where you watch videos of people watching videos of watching porn and that human kind of facial reaction thing is so oh. compelling yeah but it's it's so voyeuristic it's like google box for porn yeah. Weird. Yeah. Yep. Hey, um, what do you want to do with the next 10, 15, 20 years of your life? I oh, mean, you're going to say you've 10, 15, 20 minutes. I was going to go, no, oh, eat some we're gonna, we're going to wrap up in a minute. But cool. I was just thinking, you've had a career, you've done lots of things, you're doing lots of interesting things now. Yep. What's the, you know, not to be too depressing, but what's the last third of your career, work life going to look like? What do you want it to look like? Pat, there is nothing depressing about that. I mm -hmm. love uh, leaning into the idea that this is my third, third, my third quarter, I was going to say, because that would just out me as a 
very bad at maths. <laughs> but this is this is a season that I am actually really excited about and coming home to. I like getting older and I recognize that at this point in my life at 49 about to be 50 I have still got the option to make good life-giving choices that I have enough time to take action that will um, give me the best possible chance of a healthy future and that's whether it's mental health or emotional health or physical health I, spiritual health I I think learning, I think the fact I'd love to, I would love to complete my master's of chaplaincy. I've got a certificate and I'm doing the diploma at the moment, but I don't know that that external accolade or validation is more important, say, than the needs of my family. Mm -hmm. I would love to see my father live out his days in the bosom of his family. Um, he's very deteriorating health. I would mm -hmm. love to see my children um, mature and thrive and take off, but stay connected to our family so for me there's like this um yes I'm loving making a podcast and I'm stoked that some people are listening to it mm -hmm. because you you wonder you're like is anyone actually gonna listen like is it are people gonna like I still wonder it? that are they gonna hate it or do they love it <laughs> but, but the answer is both they'll hate it and they'll love it and and actually creatively I feel like why not? Maybe I should make a TV series about a topic I'm really interested in. Like, why don't we push the boat out? Let's have a well, few more. That, wasn't that really, yeah, what, what's wasn't that what's really in your food? Wasn't that kind of your concept? Oh, no, it wasn't my concept. But I but I basically don't do any project that I'm not really embedded in. So right, I don't okay. I don't do any projects that I'm not fully into. But no, I can't take credit for that. But I have come up with a concept and we are going to pitch it um, to a network. And hey, if they go for it, yeah, yeah, we're gonna well yeah. ride that horse, you know, because let's let's break some stereotypes. Why can't sure. we have grey haired women on telly? Now, yeah. if I'm not on telly, I'm a okay, it's fine. I don't have well, to do be. What do you think it. about if you I mean you've got a incredibly talented husband and you yourself, yep. you guys are a production house in your own? Do you just think about making stuff and doing it? I mean, with me, if you because I remember talking to a um, when I was working at More FM way back in the 90s, talking to a uh, uh, a girl there who was also an announcer who was going off to New York to do film college. And we were talking about content and product and stuff. And while she was going to do film school in New York, we were talking about this idea and she was like, yeah, but if you want eyes to see it, it goes on television. Right. So if you want, actually, if you've got a project that you want eyes to see it, put it on TV, mm -hmm. movies and stuff. And that, that was of that era. Let's say that's 98, 99. I think the same could be said today about like YouTube. If you want eyes to mm -hmm. see it, YouTube mm -hmm. is the place to put things or something similar mm -hmm. to it to give it to the vastest of audience. Is that something that you guys ever talk about? You've got this idea, yeah. you pitch it, it won't work, we'll just make it ourselves. Well, I, I love that you're throwing that out. Hamish and I have talked about that and he doesn't want to become a production company. Uh, there's probably possibly something to do with the paycheck at the end of it in terms of <laughs> the mortgage and the three teenagers and the sure. beautiful parents. Uh, that said, um, I like your idea. And if the network don't go for it, maybe we should do something. What I'm embracing in this season, apart from the no, which I'm still completely useless at, is taking action. So as a as a wahine of a certain age, I'm like, I'm going to take action. I'm sending the email. I'm making the request. I'm making the podcast. We're pitching to the network. And that feels different to when I was younger and I was waiting to say yes to an opportunity or... Yeah. But, but the cab, my caveat is that I know my sweet spot. So I know I can't do that on my own and I know I'm not good at all of the strategy and infrastructure around that stuff. And while you are kind of a one-man idea machine and always have been, you've always been idea generation. Ideation is one of your strengths and doing things and trying things and pushing things. It's just pat. I'm somebody who will bring passion and energy and expression to something, but I want to really be part of a team. I just know it. I know I'm team, like, hungry. I love teamwork. I like, I like, I mean, I, I agree with what you're saying. And look, I mean, there's nothing wrong with saying I want to earn money for this. I mean, I'm very lucky that um, I've worked hard for a long time to get into a position, not that I've got stacks of cash floating around but i live in dunedin now i'm able to manage uh, my life in dunedin fairly well 
you know so when i do things like oh i just started my um so, oh i'll just i'll just put it across this is our daily news show that goes out so when we feel like starting something you just do it and we, and we talk to the media about this concept like all the media companies and they all go geez that's great love that we should talk about that some more and i go cool let's talk about it and then like the media world goes it takes 10 or 12 or 14 weeks to come back to us and then if they want to get off the ground there's another six ma- and six months of it yep. we like, i just find some of my uh comedian friends like there's jeremy yep. alwood and yep. we just uh get it up and get it running and you know we pull in people uh we had a serial reporter from stuff.co.nz came on there yep we talked about the covid thing this morning uh as a he's a, a performer from um from Dunedin, who Jeremy knew, and we were talking about the new law about protesting outside abortion clinics, and yep. we're just like, well, let's just build it, Do and it. they will come, and at either either what will happen is build it, and the, we'll show these media outlets here it is now, now now that we've made it ourselves, it'll cost twice as much because we don't need your help, we just need your platform, or yeah. it'll work that we'll be able to you know Patreon it or sponsor it or whatever ourselves, yep. or it won't work and we'll say bye bye to it and it'll it'll disappear. Well, I salute that kind of an action, and I. I do think the fact that you are a man makes it slightly easier. And I probably, I don't know if I'm going to even get to get pushback about that. There is something about, I mean, even you think when you and I worked together, you had more experience and you were the guy. So you paneled on our radio show. And mm. I'm, I know that when I was at Ice TV and Johnny Bridges would go into the edit suite and I'd be like, oh gosh, I don't want to muck it up. So I won't edit. So I think sometimes personality impacts that stuff where I wouldn't, push myself forward. So that for me is part of this next season. Will I be willing to take a risk and fail, take a risk and push an idea forward that I'm passionate about? I don't care about the money. No. Like it's not my motivated, my driver. You need it to eat. I need it to, if, if the kids get sick. You need the money is y- useful. It's a tool, but it's not my driver. So yeah, yeah, yeah. It's got but to be a do, do I want my my husband to earn some money? Yep. I thank you. I'd love. Yes, please. Uh, one of us has to earn. <laughs> it's just practical. So, um, I th- I th- and, I think and even what you're saying, even what you're saying about say my po- podcast, Grey Areas, is on Media Works, and yes, that took a lot longer for to get up and running because we had to negotiate and and there, there were there were agreements and there were. Um, administration and there was strategy and there was publicity and there were all those things that actually help promote it and provide a audience for it and that yeah. was a price I guess we were willing to pay so and and willing like even the sponsor we're in relationship we took the sponsor to media work so we ended up in relationship with a sponsor whose missional um, statement is to make people's lives better is the same as mine so I'm yeah. like great anything we can do to encourage people to live more healthily or more happily or more contently. I'm in. But there are still um, hoops and it takes time. What do you do in your uh, Grey Areas podcast about growing up grey for men going grey but still act like nine-year-old boys? That's 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 the big question. Because like this afternoon I've got booked in with my kids who are at their mum's because I'm in isolation to play yep. some Fortnite together. That's what we're up Sweet. to this afternoon. Awesome. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Well, um, I, if you're asking for yourself, I would say just regular hugs. Absolutely. Don't kill the child within. Just, <laughs> just keep the grey. Stay connected to your humans that you love. Hug hard out. Cuddle couch it as much as you can. And Pat, you do you. You're doing I, genius. I think the other thing, just to wrap up that conversation around, you know, uh, content and making stuff and going to TV, we also play the strengths we've got. And yes. we and, and this and the strengths we've got are based on who we are and what we've done. And yes. one of the strengths you have got um, is that you your 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 um, cumulative work, your CV, would open those doors for you and allow you in to have those conversations with ones that, for some of us, are knocking on doors for a very long time. Doesn't mean the end product will be easier to get together and stuff, but certainly kicks in doors a bit better. Which I think you should. I mean, I'm sure you do. I'm not telling you how to suck eggs. You use as much as you can because that's. That's huge. Like I know that my CV, when you look at my CV, that sometimes looks impressive because of the stuff that both you and I have done at times with people to get a bunch of awards beside our names in radio. And that's fantastic for getting guests. I know that my podcast has carried on stuff 
And that's fantastic for getting international guests. We're on the biggest news platform in the country and international guests go, oh, wow, okay, well, we better go, you know. So so you use what you can as well. You scrape and you get by and you you, you highlight the best part and you, you low light the worst part and you try and make it all work together. <laughs> yeah. You do. You do. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's like a, it's like a weaving. It's like a basket. And I've sat, I guess, on that for 10 years and not done a project like this and not um, leveraged, I guess, my f former profile. I mean, I've, I've sort of been doing the mahi. It feels like I've been doing personal work that was important to me and is best done out of the limelight. And, and, you know, even just producing something, like I did a painting project as a person who graduated from art school for 50 days, I did a painting for no one. There was no audience. Whereas right. for the 20 years prior to that, everything I did was for an audience. So then just creativity for creativity's sake had lost its, like it's a concept that had flown away and yet it's a magical concept. So anytime somebody has a great hobby on Instagram, don't say to them, well, you should, you should monetize that because we shouldn't monetize everything. We should, um, yeah, just embrace the magic, whether it makes any money or not. But is it is it feels good to be able to use, you know, the work that I've done in the past to maybe yeah. get this court at all, this court at all about men and women in New Zealand aging with gusto, with gorgeousness, with a bit of grit, and not feeling like we've been left behind. And to be honest, there's almost I feel like I've can you say girded your loins? I feel like I've kind of got the bit between my teeth yeah. because yeah. I heard that there were some folk who were like, I don't think it, I don't think this will have much appeal. It's not fresh and young. I don't know right. if this will work. And I feel like what you would say regularly, fuck that. Like, let's go. <laughs> like, let's go. Um, yeah, yeah. Let's go. The, the, because we haven't been necessarily catered to doesn't mean we're not there, doesn't mean – we don't care and doesn't mean we can't take action. So I'm about like take life-giving action. Uh, I'm down. I'm down. Look, I had a couple of other questions that we're going to bounce off, but that's a nice place oh. to finish. I, I am yeah. going to give you one more, one more oh. thing before we leave mm -hmm. because I wanted to know how long it's been since you've he heard and seen uh, this. All right. For the first time ever, a world exclusive Nathan King's <laughs> Sunday, Sunday. Here's your invitation to tune in and see Do you agree? Cause it's Sunday, Sunday Right until midnight Yeah, it's Sunday Until Monday is inside See, it's Sunday, Sunday Everything is alright And Petra, you know they won't let you go to bed tonight. You won't mind, cause you know they'll be left for worse or for better. It would pay to be tuned in to see. Cause it's Sunday, Sunday, right up to midnight. Yeah, it's Sunday, until Monday is inside. So it's Sunday, Sunday, everything is alright. <laughs> oh, I'd say it's about 10 years, maybe more, since I heard that. Wow. That's awesome. A few faces and gosh, haven't we aged beautifully, Pat? Oh, that's when I started growing my beard. You can see that was the, that was the first day. Yeah. And now it's finished off. First iteration. Yeah, first iteration. That's a name you a word you use when you're creating content, isn't it? Iteration. <laughs> hey, uh, Petra Baggs, it's been utterly amazing talking to you. Mm. Um, I'll cut out all your swear words so people Thank will still you. think you're a delightful princess that never Thank says anything you. bad. 
And um, swear words aren't I, bad, Pat. Swear words aren't bad. No, appropriately, used, appropriately used their gems, I believe. It was a joke. That's why I said it. Um, I appreciate you as a person, and I appreciate the friendship we've had for such a long time, and I appreciate you made some time for me finally. <laughs> <laughs> And um, let's just give people one more heads up. If they want to find you, uh, so this obviously on Rover if it's with MediaWorks, yeah, because I'm talking, they've, yeah. I know the guys over there as well. If they want to find out more about your podcast, yeah, uh, this is your website, which is just petra.nz. But if you yeah. look, people look for the Rover app on, I guess, Google and yeah, the app and they don't mind if you watch it, there. if you listen on Spotify or Apple Podcasts. And I love it when people rate it because it turns out it actually makes a difference. <laughs> does make a difference. Quite hard. You scroll down and you find the stars. I have people phoning me. I'd love to rate it, but I just don't know how. And I'm like, yeah. keep looking. Could just keep, yeah. just try harder. Scroll to <laughs> the bottom. Scroll to, if, you're listening to, if you're listening to this podcast, you're not watching it, scroll to the yeah. bottom at iTunes, to right bottom. to the bottom. Click, and start, click. start, 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 start. Click, 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 click. <laughs> yeah. No, hey, um, big love to the Farno. Uh, big love to your dad as well um, from us. And yeah. look, it's been nothing but a pleasure to talk to you again. Oh. It's a very fucking weird thing that we do when I catch up with people that I haven't seen for 20 years or 10 years or five years or whatever it's been and then go, hey, we haven't talked for a while. This is where we're doing a podcast. But, you know, mm -hmm. P, it's always been fun making shit with you. Yep. And uh, it's been fun today just talking shit with you. <laughs> eroa, eroa. Same, same. Tēnā koe. Kia. Thank you, Petra Bagus. Everyone go See check you. out a podcast. Thanks. Check out DOC too if you haven't seen it. It's awesome. It's got swears.